when it comes to careers in rap, G Herbo has surpassed all expectations. He's over 10 years into his career and is still the most relevant he's ever been. He's a top five artist to ever come out of Chicago and one of the rare rappers in his generation with skills in traditional rap to impress the old heads as well as the ear and ability to make bangers the younger generation enjoys as well. He's embraced by the trenches everywhere. He's also one of the few artists to bet on himself, take the independent route, and still achieve massive success, racking up millions of supporters. He's been a light in his city, giving back at every opportunity, and even put up money to buy a school. But unfortunately, despite all the positivity his career has brought, along the way, he slipped up and fell into a trap that is all too common with rappers getting caught up in a fraud case due to people he kept around him. And this almost landed him in prison. So in this video, we'll take a look at G Herbo's story, everything that led up for him to get to where he's at, and how he put it all in jeopardy and almost lost it. G Herbo initially started his career under the name Lil Herb in 2010 when he was just 14 years old. He looked up to rappers like Joel Santana, Lil Wayne, Jadakiss, and Jay-Z. He grew up on the east side of Chicago in a gang infested area known as Terror Town. And this environment led him down the path of becoming a part of a gang called No Limit. This group had enemies all around and was involved in several deadly beefs. Herb took these circumstances and incorporated them into his early raps that he was recording on a flip phone at the time. He had another friend in No Limit called Bibby who also rapped and these two would collaborate frequently sending each other tracks back and forth. By 2012 they had built up their skills enough to really start putting music out. In early 2012 they released some of their first music onto YouTube, mainly freestyles on beats that were hot at the time. They didn't know it, but they picked the perfect time to begin their careers. Drill had just started the year before, and in March of 2012, Cheap Keep dropped Don't Like and blew up on a nationwide level, shining a spotlight on the new Chicago drill scene. No Limit was allied with 300, the gang Cheap Keep claimed, and Herb was cool with Lil Reese, another rapper from 300, who was also getting a bunch of attention at the time. In August, Herb got Lil Reese on the remix of a song he made called Gangway, and the track took off in the city, giving Herb the first big look of his career. Around the same time the Gangway remix was released, Herb and Bibby teamed up on a track called Kill Sh that also blew up in the city, becoming a drill classic. Fresh off the success of these big songs with the new following behind them, Herb continued to put out music and worked towards his debut project, Welcome to Faisal Land. In 2013, Herb continued dropping music and establishing himself as one of the most talented rappers emerging in the new drill scene. He wasn't as consistent as he could have been because he was still in the streets and hanging on the block more than he should have been. And as a result, he wouldn't end up finishing his debut mixtape until the next year. In February of 2014, Herb finally dropped Welcome to Faisal Land. He had taken his time to put together a solid piece of work that had high energy drill songs as well as soulful ones reflecting on the homies he lost and apologizing to his mother. Altogether, it was a great project. As a result, it took Herb to a new level of popularity as he gained more and more recognition. In April, he would end up getting the biggest look of his career when Nicki Minaj featured him on the remix of a Meek Mill track titled Shy Rack. Being featured on a song by one of the biggest stars in hip hop at the time got Herb's music out to a huge demographic, getting him a ton of new fans. After this huge look, Herb continued grinding, but he still wasn't all the way out the streets and still found himself around his old neighborhood more than he should have been. He was still releasing music moderately consistently and doing a lot of features due to his new popularity. He ended 2014 dropping Pistol P Project, his sophomore mixtape. 
2015 was another strong year for her and he continued the motion he had built up in the previous years dropping plenty of songs and freestyles early in the year leading up to his third mixtape Ballin' Like I'm Kobe. This mixtape really set Herb apart from all the other drill rappers out. It only had a handful of drill songs and the majority of the project was Herb leaning more on his rapping and storytelling ability to make more thoughtful and introspective music including songs like Peace of Mind, L's, Bottom of the Bottom, and Pain. This mixtape was a great body of work and the fans embraced it. The period from 2015 to 2016 was a critical time in Herb's career because he finally began to take music seriously and distance himself from the streets and his old block to focus on his career. It was around this time that he transitioned from going by Lil Herb to G Herbo. This was also a critical time for many other Chicago artists because Drill was starting to cool off. Bigger artists like Chief Keef and Lil Durk were watching their views plummet, but Herb continued on an upward trajectory, largely due to the fact that he had proved he was much more than a Drill artist. In summer of 2016, Herb got a big look when he was featured on the iconic XXL freshman cover. By late 2016, Herb was growing into his new fame, doing media runs, making appearances on platforms like The Breakfast Club. In 2017, Gerbo dropped his debut album, Humble Beast, a project that really displayed his full range of abilities, from his lyricism to storytelling and overall song-making ability. The album did well and further established Herb's name with the new audience who was just discovering him. Things were going up for Herb, but in 2018, he experienced a bump in the road when he was arrested after being pulled over with the strap in the car. And he would spend the next two years fighting this case. About a month later, G Herbo made an appearance at a local radio station where he ended up freestyling over the 3 6 Mafia who run it beat. I'm running. Yeah. Hey. Who you think you ahead on? Not us. In the S of the Porsche Carrera or something. Of Quinn's like TS Tamara or something. That boy getting bread, Panera or something. And the freestyle would end up going viral. Herb would end up finishing the freestyle and releasing it as a song. And the song version also took off, inspiring the Who Run It Challenge, a memorable moment in hip hop. In April of 2018, Herb would welcome his first child, Yo Son, into the world. Three months later, in July, Herb and Southside teamed up to drop a collab project titled Swervo. The two had met early into Herb's career and become good friends, frequently collaborating. And the Swervo mixtape would take off, establishing them as a dynamic duo. Overall, 2018 was a big year for Herb, but in 2019, he would find himself in a rut. His case for the strap he was caught with the previous year had begun and he couldn't leave Chicago, even to do shows. He found himself stuck in the city, stressing about what would happen. In interviews, he has described this as the lowest point of his career. He had nothing but time to record and would end up putting out two projects, Sessions and Still Swerving, the follow-up to Swervo. But the majority of fans felt like these projects weren't his best work. In October, Herb's case would finally be resolved and he was given two years probation. This was a weight off his shoulders. He could finally get back to touring and focusing on his career. In 2020, he dropped PTSD and the title track featuring Juice World and Lil Uzi Vert ended up becoming the first platinum track of his career. The name of the album was inspired by him opening up about how he had been diagnosed with PTSD from the dangerous conditions he grew up in. Along with speaking out about the topic, he also started a mental health initiative, which he called Swerving Through Stress, to help kids growing up in similar conditions get the help they need. In September of 2020, Herb announced he had bought an elementary school in his hood with the purpose of turning it into a community center. Things were going good, but then in December, he was hit with another curveball when he was named in an indictment for a fraud case. One of his associates had used stolen credit profiles for private jets and trips in Herb's name, and Herb himself had directly approved some of these purchases, tying him to the crimes. 
despite a possible prison sentence hanging over his head. Through 2021 and 2022, Herb continued working, putting out music, and doing shows as if everything was normal. In 2021, he welcomed his second son, Essex, into the world and dropped 25, his third studio album, celebrating the fact that he made it to an age a lot of people he grew up with didn't. In 2022, he welcomed his first daughter, Emmy, into the world and dropped his fourth studio album, Survivor's Remorse. The whole time, he continued his contributions back to his neighborhood, putting on drives and events through his mental health initiative, Swerving Through Stress. In 2023, the news broke that Herb pled guilty in his fraud case, which meant he would have to spend some time behind bars. Herb was left waiting in anxiety with what he believed was a five to 20 year sentence looming ahead. In late 2023, he started going viral, doing what some took as him crashing out before he was sentenced. In October, he and Southside made an appearance on Funny Marco's show, Open Thoughts. The purpose of the show is comedy, and typically Marco plays somewhat of a character, making jokes at his own expense, and guests join along. But Herb and Southside took this idea to the next level. Buck always fucking about the TJ. <laughs> on cap, no, we riding past. I got the. Mind the conversation or just him? Shut the fuck up, you dude. Just make it, bro. You, you're not even like Listen. it's our show now, bro. You feel so me? Swerve and curve. A large portion of the internet felt that they were bullying and disrespecting Marco, and Herb faced a lot of backlash. Shortly after this, he appeared in the No Love Mar video, extremely drunk. A situation that was best summed up by a comment that described the video as funny but sad at the same time. After this viral stretch, Herb slowed down on his internet appearances and fans didn't see much of him. In January of 2024, he was sentenced to three years probation. This was a huge win for Herb because he was facing up to 20 years and everybody thought he would be doing at least five. The consensus opinion of all the reactions across hip hop was he got very lucky and the system let him off easy. This brings us to the present day. Despite his mistakes and stumbles here and there, G Herbo's story is still very inspirational. He was born into an area with some of the worst conditions out of anywhere in America. He made the wrong decisions and chose the streets, but still managed to escape with talent, hard work, and consistency to become a millionaire rap star. And since he made it, he's continued to use his money and influence to help the youth in his old neighborhood and Chicago as a whole. Along the way, he's messed up here and there and made some bad decisions, but overall, he's been a positive force and uplifting voice for the community. He's accomplished an extraordinary amount in his 13-year career, dropping classic albums and mixtapes, as well as building up a major following all over the country. He's definitely stamped himself as a top three artist to ever come out of Chicago in the current generation, and is without a doubt a hip-hop legend.